Hi everyone, welcome back to Cyber Science. Uh, our next talk is titled Navigation Anomaly Detection and Added Value for Maritime uh, Cyber Situational Awareness from, from Clet Boudin. Apologies if I pronounced that uh, wrong, uh, from the French Naval Academy. So, Clet, over to you. You should be able to share your screen and, yeah. and to start your presentation when you're ready. Okay. Okay. This is good? Okay. So, hello, my name is uh, Claude Boudéen. I'm a French PhD student from the, the French Naval Academy. I work for the Chair of Cyber Defense in uh, Naval Systems. My uh, thesis subject is about the improvement of uh, anomaly detection in cybernetic naval system. And today I'm going to present you our article, which is entitled uh, Navigation Anomaly Detection an added value for maritime cyber, cyber situation awareness. So let's get started. Um, let's start with a little part of context. Uh, nowadays, the maritime sector is facing a continued shift to your digitalization. A shift built the, during the last decade uh, show all characteristics of a comprehensive information system, combining information and operational technologies. While industrial control systems like program and logic controller and SCADA uh, are used for uh, uh, engine and power management, uh, the, the bridge is now highly uh, relying uh, on digital sensors, network and display to ensure the navigation. But even if uh, this kind of system have been designed um, uh, to have a long lifetime uh, on board because we talk about 15 and 20 years. It's obviously pretty difficult to upgrade or to change. So they have not been designed uh, uh, in terms of cybersecurity and present plenty of vulnerabilities that can compromise the proper functioning of the ship. Meanwhile, over the, over the last few years, um, many cyber attacks targeting maritime assets and made publicly confirmed a real interest of criminal and non-state actor in this critical sector uh, for our global uh, globalized economies. So the new security challenges have emerged um, to face the vulnerabilities of the global navigation satellite system. There is a short list of um, uh, cyber attacks which can affect the onboard GNSS and compromise the navigation. We can notice the well-known GPS jamming, uh, which is the, the process of using frequency transmitting uh, device linked to orbiting uh, satellites to block or interfere uh, with radio communication uh, by emitting um, a radio signal at the same frequency as the uh, GPS enabled device. And then there is also the GPS spoofing, which is more intelligent than the GPS jamming, uh, because it is not only consist uh, of make some radio interferences in order to, to overpower a uh, uh, weak GNSS signal, and also causing uh, some uh, trouble into position like uh, loss, so uh, uh, satellite signal loss. It also make the receiver believe it is at the fails location. For example, um, on the on the picture in the middle of uh, in the left middle, in June 2017, a major GSS cyber attack targets more than 20 vessels in the Black Sea. Uh, all the present vessels uh, in a specific area have suddenly uh, a false location. Uh, which was not in the sea, but in the uh, in the Gelensnik uh, airport, and in this during several minutes. Uh, another case, also in 2017, a British tanker named the Stena Impero was bored by the Iranian Coast Guard uh, in the Hormuz Detroit um, uh, after being spoofed. Uh, the tanker was bored for illegally. Uh, entering Iranian uh, territorial water after an, an unexpected route deviation. And recent events that you probably can remember, uh, such as the, the blocking of the Suez Canal uh, uh, um, uh, of the, uh, for, for more than uh, six days uh, in March uh, 2021, uh, by the large container ship Evergreen. 
impacting more than 10% of the, of the world threat transport uh, and causing Egypt to lose uh, $300 million. Even so, it is unlikely that a cyber attack was the cause. Uh, in, it is a reminder that a diversion can have dramatic consequences. So to, to, to better um, understand how, how this system works and uh, how this system work and, how, and those to, to how to improve the security, uh, there is a, simpler, a simplified architecture to, of the navigation system on, on board the ship. As you can see, there are several equipment that are used um, to ensure the navigation. Uh, you have the lock, the speedometer, the geo compass. You have also the, the, the global positioning system, the GPS, and the IIS, the automatic identification system, but also the electronic um, uh, chart display information system. And to achieve interoperability and enable information uh, uh, exchange across uh, sensors and actuators, probably made by different manufacturers uh, and standardizing uh, with a common interface, national marine, uh, marine electronic association, uh, the NMEA, has designed a number of standards widely, widely used in the mating sector. Currently, uh, there are several of these, including the NMEA 0100 on, on, on 83 uh, standard and the NMEA 2000, which was designed to improve the NMEA 100 on 83. But the NMEA 100 on 83 is still widely used on ship, and sometimes both of them are, are used together uh, at the same time. In our work, we focus on the NMEA 100 on 83 standard in a particular uh, of the contact of the frame exchange between the equipment. So you, are, you can have some example of the sentence ID, uh, like the DGA uh, represents the global positioning fixed data, and the GPRMC, which is uh, the recommended minimum data from the GPS. In order to, to, to better understand how this cyber attack could be detected, we decide to conduct one ourselves. Uh, for this experiment, uh, we use an Adam Pluto uh, SDR. Uh, it's a signal device radio, which is uh, which we diverted from its initial uh, uh, use because it's normally used for academic studies in order to perform GPS proofing. Uh, for for this experiment, we use a Furno GP33. GPS receivers that we connected to by serial uh, to a PC with, with, um, uh, with an EGDIS. And all of the equipment uh, was mounted on a Zodiac to, to, for greater maneuverability. The idea was to, to see in real time how the GPS receiver could, would react when subjected uh, to a GPS proofing cyber attack. And above all, um, to see how the NMEA 183 data we, we receive will change. In fact, the, the, the signal device radio, the SDR, was configured to generate false constellations, false fake GPS information, in fact, uh, using FRE that we can find uh, directly on the NASA website. The FMRE um, are retrieved uh, in the form of file containing information of satellite's position uh, at a given time. This kind of uh, uh, pr practice uh, allow us to perform GPS spoofing and therefore to modify NMEA 0183 uh, frame, which will have now bad information uh, uh, interpreted by the DIGDIS. So there is two experiments that we carry out in the Arbor of Brest. Uh, it's located in the, 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 the French West Coast. On the left picture, uh, there is the GPS jamming uh, where after uh, 20 minutes of uh, crossing, uh, the, the, crossing the, the bay, the GPS receiver just lost all connection and can uh, position itself. And on the right uh, picture, you, you, we made an almost similar uh, crossing, but in, in which this time we made a, a GPS proofing. Uh, after, after a while, 
um, and for about 10 minutes, uh, the boat is no longer in the harbor of Brest, as you can see on the picture, but it di di directly on the, in the port. This is much more visible on, on the exit. And this experiment in real connection on the analysis of the contact of the frame allow us to, to, to set up uh, a detection methodology. So concerning, concerning this de proposed detection methodology, for efficient detec detection of anomalies such as jamming or spoofing, we have developed a detection methodology and an, ar an architecture to retrieve data from a maritime navigation system and analyze, analyze it uh, uh, before sending to the EGDIS. So as you can see, this architecture uh, has involved uh, in several uh, phases. The, the first one represents the, the most commonly found architecture uh, on board the ship, which is a direct communication between uh, a GNSS, uh, um, uh, GNSS to, to the electronic chart display. Uh, it represents the navigation equipment without, without any kind of uh, any, kind, any cyber, cyber security component. Sorry. The second step had uh, an external um, uh, spoofing or jamming attack. Uh, via uh, an external uh, radio uh, frequency, uh, radio frequency transmitter, compromising the navigation system with the step two. And, uh, and finally, the, the, the third step of this architecture implements a cybersecurity uh, component with an additional uh, embedded system that allow real-time analysis of the anemia traffic. Uh, thanks to a dedicated uh, uh, sensor and returns specific data that can be interpreted uh, uh, by the EGDIS. So to do this, we have connected the Ferruno GP33 to uh, the, it's the GPS receiver to a, a Raspberry Pi, the well-known uh, nanocomputer, which is used as a probe, as a probe to analyze uh, in real time the NMEF flow uh, to ensure anomaly detection. And the EGDIS here is represented by a, a laptop PC, which opens a pen. It's the, an open source uh, software for receiving and interpreting the, the NMEA flow. And the idea of this architecture is to create a low cost embedded device to, 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 for anomaly detection uh, and develop a warning plugin to uh, directly connect it to, to the EGDIS. So <clears throat> by Observing that uh, a data-driven uh, learning approach has proven um, an effective way to collect and gather all the, the, the anemia flow, uh, we conduct a study to, to understand how to make real-time anomaly uh, detection on GPS messages. The idea was to perform machine learning methods, methods sorry, uh, that combines maritime data flow and maritime cyber situational awareness principles. Uh, in the first step, we, we conduct three hours of anemia stream, uh, which represents the normal uh, behavior of the ship. And then after, after studying, studying all the characteristics and all the, the features of the collected anemia data, uh, we decide to select the most relevant features. Uh, for example, those uh, which are present to, to, to the GPRMC certain ID like the latitude, longitude, uh, the track and goal, uh, those present in the, the certain ID GPGGA. It's like the, all the, the features containing the accuracy of the satellites. And uh, we also choose to, to, to select the uh, certain ID GPVTG uh, to represent uh, and to have the features concerning the speed over ground of, of the ship. Uh, so <clears throat> then the machine learning process uh, we use uh, for the machine learning process, we use one class super vector machine uh, because in our simulation, um, an on our experiments, uh, the system use must be uh, fast and easy to implement in a low cost and low performance uh, detection uh, embedded probe. So as you can see, here is the representation of, um, of the training model uh, of, uh, on a normal behavior of the boat according to its cinematic and its uh, generation. So the, the, the green points are in layer, which are considered uh, as real current uh, points uh, of the cinematic of the, of the ship, 
whereas the red points uh, are outlier, uh, considered uh, as not, not uh, from the part of the global uh, normal behavior uh, of the ship. And there is, uh, <clears throat> there is it at, at, the, at the moment when the ship uh, in, in the in the, the, the slide below w w the, the, the red point the red point sorry represent the, the moment where the ship just teleports to the to the port of rest so if you have the, the normal cinematic in, in green and the anomaly in uh, in red so <clears throat> um, after integrating our training model into the, the nano PC the Raspberry Pi uh, uh, in order to make some real-time analysis, in order to, to, to define uh, the if the input uh, anemia flow uh, from the GPS com complies uh, with what it al already know. Uh, uh, in case, uh, in, in that case, the normal behavior of the ship uh, to facilitate the understanding of this kind of interaction. We create a plugin able to to interpret uh, interpret and the new anemia uh, frame established with the navigation system could potentially be. So you have uh, three stages that we just imagine and develop for the for this plugin uh, directly on OpenCPN. Uh, a gray status uh, uh, indicating that uh, there is a problem of reception of the frame or a reception or a failure from the GPS on IIS uh, systems, which are specific messages indicate uh, that, uh, to the operator that there is a problem. A green statue, uh, which indicates that there is nothing abnormal given uh, on the reception of the NMIA 183 frame. The operator uh, is informed that there is nothing to report at the navigation level. And finally, a, great, a red status uh, indicating to the operator that there is a potential cyber attack. An alert message is displayed uh, to warn the operator uh, that something is wrong and suggest to use uh, 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 some uh, alternative uh, positioning method. So <clears throat> uh, here is our, our first uh, pre preliminary uh, results to evaluate the performance of the uh, Im imagine uh, method. So um, we exper experiment uh, in our case and for this first proof of concept, just three case uh, of GPS proofing. Uh, 100 uh, yards, uh, 10 yards, and one yard uh, of decoying, and and just we, we just uh, compare our method, uh, our method, uh, one class super vector machine, and another statistic uh, method, uh, which is based on the previous strike angle and 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 the distance uh, of the ship. Uh, and as you can see, the, the, the first model we, we test uh, with the one class super vector machine gave us uh, better results. So we, we choose to, to, to keep this one uh, for our first uh, test. And as a conclusion, um, we described the machine learning approach for, for vessel behavior based uh, GPS anomaly detection with a data driven process. Um, uh, thanks to a low cost embedded system, we can perform a real time anomaly detection strategy on navigation system on board the ship. Um, and this solution can improve uh, pretty well for, for the moment. The maritime, the maritime cyber, cyber, cyber situational sorry, awareness by alerting, uh, uh, by alerting onboard operators of potential cyber attack and make easier the, the decision making. And uh, con concerning the, the future works, we, we um, uh, probably going to extend the, 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 the case to, to more global studies to identify a learning model for, for several ships, uh, depending to the context. Um, we, we're going to also uh, probably generate, and we are uh, uh, currently doing that, generate a data set to, to benchmark anomaly detection uh, uh, strategy, uh, not only for the GPS, but uh, with the correlation uh, of all the equipment of the bridge. And, uh, and finally, we try to, to extend the experiment. We currently try to extend the experiment to the uh, IIS uh, patent chain. For, for, for doing some classification. So <clears throat> there we go. Uh, thank you so much for your attention and for your, inter for your interest.
uh, if anyone has any question, I will be happy to, to, to answer you. Thank you very much, Clet. Um, we, we have a question here. It says, okay. um, many thanks for your excellent presentation. The required long lifetime of mind uh, systems evidently makes it very difficult to maintain cybersecurity, in particular to maintain continuous, complete, high integrity configuration controls of every software and hardware component. In your research, have you identified any relevant work on long-term configuration management and patch management approaches, perhaps from the space sector where after the launch of a satellite or planetary exploration robot, it's not possible to access the device physically? Okay, uh, I, I see. Uh, I see the problem. It's a very relevant question, but no, no, no not yet. Uh, it's a recent work, so we we didn't uh, make some research about uh, uh, that, that kind of uh, study. But uh, yeah, it's a very relevant question. Uh, yeah, but not yet. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um... Then another question is, how can you explain the decrease in performance as the distance increases? Oh, sorry, as the distance decreases? Uh, it's because, yeah, I know it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, difficult to, 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 to understand uh, because the, the, the uh, uh, in fact, you, we, we just put the, the signal uh, to one, 100 yards and we spoof the signal one, uh, 10 yards and we spoof the signal uh, one yard. So uh, more the, mm, the better the, the distance increase, the more uh, the, 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 the algorithm can detect because it's a, a, a brutal movement. It's a brutal uh, changement uh, to the cinematic. So uh, for, for, the, for the first test, uh, uh, we can explain that uh, about this reason because when you have a, a, a long distance, it's uh, pretty easy to, to detect that there is, a, there is a, a, a change to your cinematic. So that's why. Okay. And then to what extent uh, do you consider that the presence of personal devices on ships presents a cybersecurity threat, for example, tracking the ship location by tracking the people? Uh, I'm sorry, I, mean, I didn't understand the, the first part of the, of the question. To what extent do you consider that the presence of personal devices on ships presents a cybersecurity threat? For example, you, could, you, you can track a ship location by tracking the people, a uh, location of people on the ship. Yeah, that is a good question. Um, I'm not pretty sure that I understand well. Is that about if... There is, a, um, is, is this, uh, if uh, there is uh, some cybersecurity component already on the ship, or it's I can deduce that. Uh, uh, no, the, the, uh, I think the question is more like uh, when people have smartphones, essentially, people okay. on the ship have smartphones, <laughs> so you can locate the ship based on the location. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of yeah. So, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, think about that, but yeah, it's a pretty relevant way to, to notify if uh, a ship will move or, uh, or have uh, been targeted by a GPS spoofing. Yeah, it's a pretty relevant uh, uh, remark because I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't think about that yet. Okay, and then uh, Siri is asking, uh, would you make your data set public available when your work is complete? Yes, uh, yeah, yes, uh, for sure. The data set in, is not, uh, not uh, already uh, uh, not uh, ready yet because we, we are, uh, we, we are act currently doing some, some tests. We, we are just uh, uh, try to, 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 we just try to, to generate some uh, data set which represent different ship. Uh, because uh, uh, a cargo, uh, a tanker, uh, a, 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 a threat, sorry, a threat transporter will not have the same cinematic. So you can have some data set and you can have some uh, uh, um, uh, specific data set for from specific data set just uh, for, for 
to a specific ship. Sorry, sorry for the for, for my French accent. So yeah, we're gonna publish the, the data set for, for sure, but in not it's not ready yet. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if uh, when it's ready, uh, it's gonna be publicated uh, after the analysis uh, of uh, our team. But yes. Okay, that's great. I don't see any other questions there. So okay. thank you very much, guys, for your presentation. <laughs> thank you so much. And thanks, uh, thanks to all the attendees for attending the session. Our next uh, session is starting at 3 p.m. Uh, UK time, and we'll have a keynote speak. A keynote speech from Dr. Ramesh Ramados, uh, a co-chair of the IEEE Blockchain Initiative. So I hope to see many of you there at 3 p.m. So thank you very much. Goodbye. See you. Bye.